afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. Welcome to everyone to St. Philip Neri Parish. Uh, we want to welcome our visitors. So do we have some visitors from out of town today with us? Or from? Any visitors? No, come on. Livonia, good to have you. Welcome. Ian? Grand Rapids, good to have you. Anyone else with over right here? Over here? Where from? Howell. Howell, Michigan. Good to have you. Welcome. Lake Orion. Lake Orion. Wonderful. Welcome. Ian? South Africa. What? <laughs> wow. Welcome. You came a long way to Mass. Wow. 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 Where else? Grand Rapids. Good to have you. Welcome. Well, that's the farthest this year so far. Wow. <laughs> okay, before we start Mass, uh, we're going to go to our, it's not, you can't hear me, Phil? Is the microphone on, everyone? It is on? Okay. Hey, you closer to my mouth. We can pray a special prayer before Mass. It's in our hymnal. Let's stand and pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. My, my parish, parish is composed of people like, like me. me. I, I help make it what it is. is. It'll be friendly if I am. It'll be holy if I am. If Jews be filled if I have filled them. It will do great work if I work. It'll be prayerful if I pray. It'll make generous gifts to many causes if I'm a generous giver. It'll bring others into worship if I invite and bring them. It'll be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, of compassion, charity, and mercy if I can make it what it is and filled with these same things. things. Therefore, Therefore, with the help of God, I now dedicate myself to the task of being, being all things that I want my parish to be. Amen. And today, it might be a good thing for us to each offer our masses for those suffering in, in Florida, those who lost everything, for those who lost lives because of the, the hurricane. Let's, let's pray for them earnestly today that they don't lose faith in the midst of such tragedy. And it's also a good, joyful thing today to um, my, I have one in two servers at the parish that always are with me, and John's celebrating his 15th birthday tomorrow. So, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear John, happy birthday to you, and many more, many more. Bless you, John. Thank you. Let's turn to each other and welcome each other to Mass. Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome. Welcome. i got to go over here to Jake, South Africa. Wow. <laughs> welcome all that way. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Good to have you guys here. All the prayer with city. <laughs> Today we celebrate the 27th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Let's begin by singing from your blue hymnals number 677, a Living Faith, number 677. Oh, precious mind, raising on. 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks. For your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth. Of good will, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone. 
alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, glory to God, glory to God, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us and pardon what conscience dreads and give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. How long, O Lord, I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you, violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and clamorous discord. Then the Lord answered me and said, write down the vision clearly upon the tablets so that one can read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The rash one has no integrity, but the just one, because of his faith, shall live. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
let us ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come into his presence giving thanks. Let us hail him with the song of A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake. But bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, 
you would say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted into the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant, who has just come in from plowing or tending the sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat? Put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you when you have done all that you have been commanded? Say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to. To do the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. How many times have we said it? If I just had more faith. I think most of us through all life have struggled at one time or another. Different points in our lives, sometimes not lack, lacking faith. We think to ourselves that if we just had faith, we wouldn't have so many questions or doubts in our life. If I just had more faith in God, He would answer my prayers. If I just had more faith, he wouldn't have had to die. She would have recovered. If I just had more faith, I would be more involved in the church. If I just had more faith, I would be a better person, a better parent, a better spouse, a better friend. If I just had more faith, I would truly know what to do at all times. I would be able to handle things better in my life. If I just had more faith, life would be so very different. It is an approach, isn't it, of faith, at least as of old, as the apostles, isn't it? Their own faith. Is the approach... Really, they have taken in today's gospel, asking the Lord to increase their faith. They wanted something different than what they knew. And so they asked Jesus. It seems like a reasonable request, doesn't it? For all of us. If it's a little good or a lot better, if we had more, wouldn't it be? I mean, if McDonald's can supersize french fries and big Drinks, maybe Jesus could increase our faith too and supersize it as well. The request to increase faith, the belief that if I had more of it, things would really be much better, reveals, I think, maybe to all of us a misunderstanding of what faith really is. Faithfulness is not about size or quantity, is it? Faith is not given to us as in a packet to be spent on currency-like, in a sense, in dealing with all our things and our problems that we have in life with God. Faith is not measured out at all, is it, according to how difficult the task might be or the work before us. Faith is not a thing that we have or get. Faith is really a relationship a relationship of love and trust with God. Faith is not about giving intellectual arguments or agreements to particular doctrines of faith. Faith is not about how much or how strongly we believe Jesus' words. When we speak of a married couple, 
their faithfulness. We do not mean that they believe or agree with each other's ideas or even their particular understandings of things, of marriage. They're faithful. Faithful because they have committed themselves to each other in love and trust. And they're faithful because they continually give that life to each other and receive the other's love and trust back over and over and over again. They're faithful because they carry with them that one relationship wherever they go and all that they are and all that they do. And so it is in our relationship with the Lord in faith. It's the same way. Faith will not change any of the circumstances of our lives. Instead, it really changes us, doesn't it? Living faith does not shield us from pain, difficulties of life. It does not undo the past, nor does it make a particular future for us better. Rather, faith is a means, a means by which we face and deal with all the circumstances of our life, knowing God is with us. The difficulties, the losses, the joys, the successes, the opportunities, the possibilities. And when he's there, faith does not get us a pat on the back, a reward, a promotion, in, the God, in God's eyes, does it? It's simply a way in which we're called to live, live this life of ours in love and trust as beings connected to God. And at the end of the day, the faithful ones can say without pride, with pride and without shame, we've done all that we ought to have done, nothing more, nothing less. We've lived in openness to, trust in, and love for Christ. And we've allowed Christ to guide our lives, our decisions, our words, our actions, and we have been sustained by him in life, and one day, in death. Faith, however, is not lived out or abstract, is it really? It has to be practiced. It has to be lived day after day in the ordinary circumstances of this life of ours. Sometimes when days are filled with heaviness and pain, life seems more than we can carry. But it's by faith, the relationship with Jesus, that we get up each morning and face the reality of our life because we have the Lord's help. Other days present other circumstances as they always do, and when we feel the pain of the world on our shoulders and respond to others, like the Lord asked, by feeding the hungry, housing the homeless, speaking for justice, when we experience the brokenness of relationships and offer our forgiveness, and mercy, when we see the downtrodden and offer truly our presence, our prayers, and all those we live with, all that we see, all that we act with in life, it's by faith that we go forward, knowing we've been strengthened by doing his work. And then there's days when we feel powerless, lost, and we do not know where to go. But in faith, we sit back in silence and wait and don't give up. Faith, then, is how we live. The lens through whom we see ourselves, how we see the world, how we see others. The criterion by which we act and speak and our faithfulness means that no matter where we go, no matter what circumstances we face, we do so in a relationship with the one who created us, who loves us, sustains us, and has redeemed us. Jesus does not supersize our faith, does he? It's not necessary. Not at all. Because we live by faith. Not because we have enough faith. Because we do have faith. We have it even if it's a faith the size of a mustard seed. 
That's all we need. And Jesus believes that. So should we. We have it. Rather, how are we living that faith? How do we live it? How do we have it? How is our faith? Is our faith and our relationship with Jesus changing our lives, our relationship, the lives of others? If not, more of the same will surely make no difference. The mustard seed of faith is already there, implanted in every one of us. It's put there. It is Christ himself. He has not withheld anything from us. He's given us all. He has given us all we ever will need. We have enough. We do need more faith. We need more response to the faith. The Christ, the mustard seed, the relationship we already have. And so let's not forget, it's there. It's always there, helping us on this journey. We can ask the Lord for whatever we want, but we know that he's there. He's with us. He's put that faith there. Always. Amen. Stand and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light. True God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we now turn to you with these, our prayers, knowing in faith that you are always there. That the pastors of the church will stir into flame the many and varied gifts which the Spirit gives to the laity and always encourage them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That there may be an end to the violence of crime, war, abortion, and oppression. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through this time of tragedy in Florida, those most affected and who have lost the most will know of God's presence and learn of the Holy Spirit's comfort. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who no longer practice the faith, especially among our own families, may not harden their hearts, but rather hear the Lord calling them back. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be comforted and healed and in turn serve the needs of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who have died may be received into everlasting life and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners and visitors of St. Philip Neri, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for any attention that you brought to this Mass today that you would like to now mention 
to our Lord in the silence of your heart. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we know that there might be so many people in the world today that are lost faith because of the things that have happened recently. But we ask that you lift them up and help them to know you're there for them through the loving hands that will help them in the days they had. We ask that you always are there for those most in need, most desperate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Answer these prayers we make today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you are now seated, we ask that the ushers come forward to accept your goodness. Thank you, people of God, for how you support St. Philip Neary Parish. Thank you. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your command, and through these sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, Graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you laid the foundations of the world. You've arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man and woman in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all of its wonder to rule in your name over all that you have made and to forever praise your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in one voice now we all acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Philip Neri and all the saints who have pleased you and in whose constant intercession we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Jeff, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and all the people of God, your entire people that your son has redeemed for, as your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on our world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Shall we share that sign of peace and love with each other? Behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ Bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. John, the body of Christ. Henry, the body of Christ. Peter, the body of Christ. Bill, the body of Christ. Rosemary, the body of Christ. Distribute the body of Christ.
the love we share. Holy Father, as always, ask that we continue to pray for those in Ukraine suffering from the war. But today, let's add all those suffering in Florida, all those who lost their lives. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is heaven. in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament that we have just received, so as to be transformed into what we have consumed. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And just a few reminders for the week ahead. First off, our faith formation class must begin next Sunday. We will also be starting our adult faith formation group. Uh, we will meet in the parish uh, after Mass during the same time as the children's classes. Please join us for this discussion after the 10 o'clock Mass. 
Father Pat will be concluding his talks on spirituality this Wednesday night at 6 p.m. in the church. Tomorrow we're going to have that brunch after Mass, after the 10 o'clock Mass. My uh, car smells like Polish kielbasa. I got it right from the smoker this, this afternoon, so boy does it smell good, and those rolls are, look delicious. Um, so this after 10 o'clock Mass tomorrow, I'll bring a dish to pass. First Friday, lunch is next, next Friday after uh, the Mass. Mass starts at 11, but we'll have adoration from 10 to 11, then, then Mass, then the luncheon follows. There's a sign-up sheet at the bulletin stands if you're coming to lunch. Uh, we are looking for those to lead the rosary before Masses during October. Sign up at the bulletin stands. Before you leave, stop and sign our welcome cards for our new parishioners by St. Philip Neri statue. And on your way out of church today, please pick up Bishop, Bishop Walsh's statement regarding Proposal 3 and why we as Catholics need to vote no. They are located at all the bulletin stands today. And adopt a highway teams will be cleaning up our section on M22 on Monday the 3rd at 5.30. Meet in the parking lot to do the cleanup. And I think it should take just less than an hour, they think. Okay, that's all the announcements. Have a great week, everyone. Bless all of you here today. Bless all of our visitors as you travel, especially from South Africa. How many hours does it take to get here? 22. 22. Oh, my God. Wow. That's almost a whole day. <laughs> wow. Good to have you. Good to have you. Wow. I've never been there, but if you invite me, I'll come and visit you. <laughs> okay. I don't think my parish would be very happy if I left to South Africa. <laughs> have a great day, everyone. Let's bow our heads praying for God's blessing. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May the Lord always walk beside you. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Let's go forth now glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God. Yes, sir.